bamboos bruising bill plates, Prusa's producing petroleum, and filament fluidizing in a furnace. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 152. Let's get into it. Hey y'all, welcome back to channel. Welcome to week 152 of Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And if you are dealing with particular problems of your own with your 3D printers, you can reach out to us on all the social media, slide into those DMs, and use the hashtag Print Fix so we can be alerted to it. The best ones to reach me on are Twitter and YouTube. Let's get into one that we alluded to last week, a Bamboo A1 Mini that decided that becoming an engraver is the right move. This is not the first one of this that I've seen, and in fact, this appears to be a more common problem with 3D printers lately, especially as we move away from inductive-based probing systems and use load cell base, right, where the nozzle's literally booping the build plate to figure out where the build plate is and to get a good mesh of the build plate itself. From Prusa's to Bamboo's to Creality's to Sobel, we've seen it from all the brands. And I just don't understand why. Is it because the load cells are triggering wrong? Is it because there's gunk on the nozzle and then that's becoming an issue? I don't know what is causing this other than the load cells are randomly failing and load cells are not really known to fail. So I got to pass that one to you all. Why do you think this is occurring and what can we actually do to stop it? But let's actually talk about this A1 Mini. It says, dang, rip textured plate, maybe even the hot end. Hashtag cooked. Well, yeah, I, I would say that this is a pretty cooked printer right here. I would definitely be replacing that nozzle. I know that it looks okay. And for all intents and purposes, it does look fine. But man, if it is tilted even a little bit, that can't on the nozzle itself will well, make it not print very well because you're not going to get good readings with that load cell. At least on the X1 Carbon, the initial nozzle cleaning sequence is so abrasive that it wears through coatings on build plates and can actually deform the metal on the build plate. Load cells should be able to trigger at a considerably lower rate than what they are with 3D printers. I wonder if that's a thing, but I guess we also don't want them to be too easy to trigger because, well, then you get a lot of false positives. Looking at this photo specifically as we enhance, we can see that the, the opening for the nozzle right there, that's not centered. And and I, I, I just don't think that that's right. I would question about this hot end itself. I don't like that look. Off center doesn't work for me. Now there could be some schmoo in the holes in the middle and we just can't see it. I don't know, but it doesn't really exude confidence. Now this user did reach out to Bamboo Lab customer support, which at least in my experience and some of the experience of our commenters is very hit or miss. Um, I finally gave up with Bamboo Lab customer support and their technical support when they refused to help me until they realized that I was a content creator. But I'm glad that this person had a better experience than I have had in the past. Now, I have had good experiences with their support, but by and large, not great. We can see that Bamboo asked for more pictures and they did send a replacement plate and apparently some new nozzles. So this kind of damage, I don't think is gonna upset anything in the motion system of the printer. So the two things that were damaged, the nozzles, which in this case are not hot ends because the way the A1 Mini works, the nozzles and the actual build plates, those are the damaged parts, replace them. Hey, that's a great experience with support. Good job. Next up, leaking oil. My Mark III is printing okay, TPU, except it leaves these black trails. I can get rid of them on the top layer, but they are baked in the lower layers. I've tried wiping my nozzle block clean and this oily substance keeps appearing randomly. I'll wipe the nozzle clean until no trace of this oil remains and my first few layers are going down clean. Then I'm randomly getting blobs of this oil on my prints. It wipes away with a little alcohol to paper towel. I know it's not just burnt filament. I know it looks like it could be black filament from the seeds, but the black streaks are random throughout the strap and appear way before I switch to the black filament. Thankfully, I guess for your level of freedom, your printer has not struck oil, so calm down, United States. You don't need to liberate this person and their printer. 
thank you. But as you can see, I'm, I'm literally the, the, the top commenter right there saying, I bet your nozzle or heat break are loose and leaking. So what can happen, especially on V6 based printers? We're gonna go ahead and use a clean V6. Technically, this is not a true V6. This is a clone V6, but it shows up way nicer on camera. What we have happening here is that the nozzle and the heat break are two separate parts. Unlike on Prusa's an extruder, where the nozzle and the heat break are the exact same part, and it's one solid unit. Although, I'm told that with enough force, you can, you can really push these apart, but we're not gonna try that today. The V6 style is got a separate nozzle and a separate heat break. And if those are not tightened together, right? Tightened to each other, when they're hot, they're going to leak. But you might say, Grant, there are threads in the way. How would this leak? We can see that even with a mild quarter turn at the entire hot end assembly here, is loose and that being loose means that filament will slowly work its way through those threads out across your heat block and then down across your print and in fact this official one had that at one point or another now this official one has been upgraded quite a bit it is sporting a titanium heat break copper block and nozzle x on it which for the time was the best combination possible now of course, you can do much nicer things, but at the time, that was like a $140 hot end. If you don't not only tighten them to each other, do not tighten the nozzle to the block. Doesn't matter. You want to tighten it to the heat break. And in fact, in the E3 instructions, they tell you to tighten the nozzle to the block, then take two turns out of it, then screw in your heat break, and then get everything to nice hot, like 290, and then uh, go ahead and torque the nozzle down. That has worked for us for years without any problems at all. My best guess here is that is what is occurring. Well, yes, it's not burned filament. The filament's not burning. It's getting molten and it's going across your parts. If it is actually oil, I would check your ball bearings. The LM8 you use that Purusha uses cannot hold that much oil, right? They, they hold very, very little amounts and you should be using grease. I'm not saying that you do, because I know in a lot of cases, we don't always use grease. We use oil because it's easier. And yes, that will damage the bearings faster over time. No, I don't care because it is cheaper to do that, to replace it all once than it is to take the whole thing apart and lube it twice a year. I really think this is molten filament that has made it down to the actual nozzle and is then being embedded into the print. You might get lucky where you can wipe it away, but the fact that they're saying that it wipes away with a little alcohol and a paper towel has me a little bit suspect. So, so let me know what you guys think of this in those comments and hey, leave a like and get subscribed. It costs you nothing and it helps the channel out immensely. And well, I would greatly appreciate it. Next up, Positron 3D giving me nightmares and I guess giving you nightmares as well. They tagged me because um, apparently Positron really just likes messing with me. And see, I would argue that if this was all upside down, it wouldn't have melted onto the coils. If you don't know Positron, we interviewed with Nomads Galaxy to talk all about this weird thing that is the upside down 3D printer that not only prints upside down, but it folds into this cute little thing that can fit inside of a freaking filament box. So it is hyper portable as a 3D printer, which is super freaking cool. But um, yeah, don't dry your filament in toaster ovens or big ovens for, for that matter. Uh, we can see here that uh, this individual has a bit of the molten goo going on. And um, yeah, that's not fun. See, the thing with ovens or toaster ovens or anything with a large heating element, they are likely using a system called bang, bang rather than PID. You might know PID from your 3D printers where you have to recalibrate your PID loop. And often we call this a PID auto-tune. PID is what keeps your printer running at the temperature that you tell it to run at and knows how to properly turn on and off the heaters and how to modulate that on and off to keep that temperature consistent. Bang, bang is on or off. Put a thermometer in your oven. One of the oven thermometers, please. You don't need plastic melting in your oven. And just next time you gotta go bake some cookies or something, set the oven to the desired temperature. And as soon as it makes the noise, check that thermometer. I would bet that it is at least 40 degrees below where it 
actually needs to be. That is 40 degrees freedom rather than in non-freedom units. That's done because the bang bang loop that is programmed in knows that those heaters are going to stay hot for a little bit longer after they're turned off, like a light bulb, especially the old incandescent light bulbs. You turn them off and you touch them. Well, they know that when they turn off the heater, in the next few minutes before the heater goes on, it's going to hit that temperature, then it's going to go down, then it's going to hit it, then it's going to go down. And it often will also overshoot. The overshoot is particularly the problem and what causes your filament to get all molten on you. And that is just money out the door. There is no saving that. You can't fix that. Okay, technically you can fix that, but don't try. You'll need shredders, regrinders, filters. You'll need a proper filament extrusion system. You'll need a spooling system. And based on my experience of that at Printed Solid, which we'll card to that video, making Jesse's Elixir, which I'm told is coming soon TM, but it was coming soon TM last year. So hopefully it is still coming soon TM. This individual, apparently this is not their first time or this is a collection from somebody else. They say they keep a collection of these photos show people why it is best to use a food dehydrator. I think the person put a actual print in the oven and we can see the carbon rods here used for actual heating. And yeah, um, molten goo. Now I will say there are valid reasons to use an oven to melt filament, especially if you're going to be taking your scrap filament, melting it into bricks or something like that to use, whether it's in community gardens or something like that, where it can be repurposed rather than ending up in a landfill. And that is always super cool in my book. We would love to find more interesting ways to recycle material, whether that is to regrind it and re-extrude it into filament. And if you do want to see that, let me know some thoughts that you have in those comments because I want to try something out and definitely want to try different methods of filament recycling in a way that we can take what is normally waste and either turn it into some piece of art or use it in a practical manner for building blocks or whatever it may be. Last but certainly not least, Diomedes here said, at 3D Musketeers, thanks for the tag, by the way. Just got a pair of hardened nozzles from a friend of mine that he bought from ye old AliExpress. I was hoping that he paid at most $10. He paid $3.79. He's in the ICU and I'm in jail. Now, the first question that I have is, who did he have to pay to smuggle in those cutters? Because those cutters should not be accessible inside of a jail. But I will certainly say that we have some issues with these nozzles. Uh, it looks like they forgot to take their little blue pills and are nowhere near as hard as they actually should be. This is why we tell you guys over and over and over again, I get it. Buying from official sources is expensive, but there's a reason for it. Those official sources have a quality assurance standard. That means your hardened nozzles are not going to be as hard as a 30 day old banana that's been sitting on your counter that you seem to ignore for reasons that you refuse to validate. I don't like bananas, so that's not my thing. But if you feel called out, you might want to go get that taken care of. Unless you're printing with diamond laden filament, which that does actually exist, I'm told. And I'm very curious to run it through a diamondback nozzle. So uh, whoever makes that filament, y'all should send me some because we want to abuse the hell out of some diamondbacks. And that would be a lot of fun. So if you make diamond filament or you know who does, let me know in those comments. But this one, this is simple. Don't buy cheap. Remember. Buy nice or buy twice or, you know, buy once, cry once or all the other ways that the guys that buy Milwaukee try to validate the fact that they spent $800 on a rolling toolbox. I don't own Milwaukee. I, I have, I have not YouTube money. <laughs> but if you do want to help us get some of that YouTube money, you can join our Patreon, PayPal, YouTube channel members. Yes, I found a way. To convert that into a call to action, too freaking bad, we're rolling with it. And for as little as $1 a month, you can support the efforts that we do here on the channel. And for $10 a month or more, you can come hang out in our private Discord server, where we have hangouts all the time just for our fans. But at least in this particular case, this one did not last longer than four hours, so you don't have to go talk to your doctor, but you might want to talk to your dealer, if you will. But definitely we should look at increasing the security of our jails, because I'm not entirely certain how you got cutters into that. It's probably an American jail. Speaking of American jails, the names just like right next to me probably don't belong in American jails. Maybe they do. 
I don't know. They're cool people nonetheless because they help support the channel at the $5 tier and higher. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series where you can watch over 150 episodes of me getting slightly upset at 3D prints for reasons that will eventually be validated at some point. And right next to that will be our live stream for the Sovel SV08, a live stream that I haven't done yet, so I hope it goes well. That is all I have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your lovers. Don't forget to leave a like. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.